What's up guys, it's Trek and happy 2019 to all of you. I hope that you had a bright New Year's uh, just to kind of get it out of the way. If you saw my most recent video, um, things are getting a little bit better, like we are well on our way to our first Patreon goal and just taking these past few days kind of away from the hobby to recharge and rest uh, in the company of some friends who are uh, not particularly nerfy. It was very, very good. And when I returned, I swung by Target to grab some Coca-Cola for the workshop and found this. So I did purchase this at Target. Uh, it's not available on Amazon yet, but I will put a link in the description box to where it will be on Amazon eventually. Um, but this is a Zombie Strike nail biter. It's a very interesting aesthetic kind of direction for the Zombie Strike line, and they've been working their way this way for a long time. But it's like the constant or classic uh, zombie apocalypse thing. Like, why don't people use alternative or improvised weapons? That's why Daryl from The Walking Dead is so like cool, is because he has uh, infinite quote unquote ammo. Not that those fiberglass arrows should have lasted uh, as many seasons as as The Walking Dead has. I mean. I think at this point, the real Walking Dead is the crew for that uh, production. Anyway, all asides aside, this is the nail biter. So the nail biter, and you can see our zombie strike kids have their traditional pizza here. You can pick this one up for 39 States dollars at Target. And that puts it right in that pseudo primary range. Uh, and we're going to test it and find out today if it's worth it. So we have also look out for the zoom and doom, which is like a silencer made of a flashlight and a dart holder made out of something. Couldn't find that at my Target, didn't have all of the new new, but I did find the uh, the chopstock. So we'll be reviewing that in this video as well, but we wanna get the nail biter out of the way first. So this is your be prepared for anything, and I just think that it's interesting because I've always thought that like nail guns and chainsaws would be really good in a, a zombie apocalypse. Like in particular, like did you know that Home Depot sells chainsaws that are on like 14 foot poles for the purposes of trimming tree branches like to me that's always been like man you could just that's that's the plan until the gas runs out right guys so i'm gonna pull this out on the back here it is advertising that it has an indexing clip on it and that is uh that is technically correct uh this mechanism here as it will index is technically a clip, not a magazine because of the method in which it holds its ammunition. So let's free it. So uh, this thing is actually kind of sweet. Now you will need large hands to actuate it properly. That's the webbing and that's where my fingers come to. So I have enough to wrap around about a joint and a half for most of my uh, my fingers here. My pinky doesn't even rest on here. I guess you could, but it's most comfortable to have it underneath. So uh, here you've got a foregrip kind of, it's like a guard, which if this was an actual nail gun would be the part where you like press it up against to like detent the safety, quote unquote. There is no safety on this blaster, no rival nonsense. Uh, and the aesthetics are pretty good. Like this looks like an oversized cartoony kind of nail gun, but the real winner is that there is no prime on here anywhere. You don't prime this blaster just like a nail gun. You push and squeeze. So it's using the old uh, snap fire kind of mechanism, which is to say that this is priming the blaster as you pull it down. And then finally at the end of it, it releases. Now that means that it's probably going to shoot soft, so we'll take her outside and put her over the chronograph just to be sure, but we've got nail biter here, which is interesting because as you pull it out, it becomes less visible. It's only when the orange of that clip is in there, but uh, oh, it makes a good noise too. Like then we've got deco on this side and molded deco on the other side. This is something that I've been talking about for a while. Like if you're going to completely not paint half of your blaster, like at least kind of embellish that. So up here, at least it's hidden down here. It's pretty egregious, but uh, this side looks great. This side uh, has all of the interesting gears in the cutout inside there. So overall pretty neat. It does have a stock attachment point and a muzzle attachment point. I have no idea why zombie strike blasters are getting these constantly now. Uh, for all of their accessories, but in strike blasters are not still just a tiny gripe It couldn't have been an entirely positive video, but for uh, 30 United States dollars like I can tell you already just having Semi-auto Springer goodness and that's like more or less what this is you get one round per <laughs> Trigger pull and if the performance is any kind of decent 
sorry camera um then then it's it's serious it's a very very cool blaster but uh thirty dollars semi-auto eight shots it's a lot like a snap fire but it's all zombie striked out and zombie strike aesthetic so we're going to review the chop stock now if all you want is the uh the fps values for the nail biter feel free to skip ahead but uh, overall, I'm going to say that this one's pretty solid. You've got rail attachments on here too. Now, they're going to be funky angled rail attachments. They don't make a whole lot of sense. I guess technically they're in line with the, the muzzle as I'm looking at it. The issue is that that means you have to tilt down like this, whereas like I would want to hold this like this, which means that it's tilting up just a little bit. The angles on this are kind of funky. It's cattywampus, the handle, as to the, the line of sight. Or muzzle but maybe all of that will be fixed with a sweet sweet stock attachment point coming at it with zombie strike flavor so here we have ye old chop stock and this one's interesting it was ten dollars at target and for ten dollars you get the chop stock good we have pizza on the back of this one in the same sort of deco as well and this just says you'll be prepared for anything so it's a hard plastic axe with soft foam on the edges, and that is it. It's adjustable like this, but hilariously, there's no foam padding to be your shoulder stock. And then this, you run the serious risk of if you're using it as a melee. Uh, that's pretty good, but if you ever clip them anywhere else, it's all hard plastic. So this is nowhere near as nice as the Enforce weapons of old. I still think that those are pretty tough to beat. I am curious, like this is locked and short version. And when it's short, it's like a hatchet. And if you want tomahawk, you got to extend it. Only there are three settings, but the middle setting appears to have no real lock. No, it does. Okay, so this is a pretty good detent system. It's better than they have been in the past, especially for like a raider. But if we throw that on there. It's impacting the camera. That audio is going to be so rough. Um, I don't think that the chop stock is necessarily an ideal addition to this, but in fact, it looks kind of funky. What if we extended it fully and then used this as a... No, this is, this is too ridiculous. Um, we're starting to get into, like, bionicle levels of, like, what if we just combined the machines? They'd look like monsters. Um, so let's take the nail biter outside, let's put it over the chronograph. I suspect, just similar to the snap fire mechanism and how that works, that our performance will be slightly lower than elite performance, but if we're getting 70 FPS out of this, I will be super duper pleasantly surprised. Let's go! It's only a little cold in Georgia now. This is actually uh, not bad weather. And this is a not bad blaster. That's called a Segway, kids. So anyway, we, uh, we have the nail biter, we have the chronograph. Let's get those sweet, sweet two digit numbers. Um, hopefully this reads properly, like again, the only downside to this is that since it's a little cattywampus in terms of the angle of uh, trigger pull and the angle of the barrel, like you actually have to readjust your aiming, it's not like you can just point and fire and be accurate, you're going to have to get a feel for this blaster if you so chose to use it for, you know, actual zombie slaying, but we'll try and stabilize as we... 32, oh boy. 48, uh, didn't read it was moving so slow, error, 38, error, 50. Okay, so got a lot of errors. Uh, some of those errors are due to it tilting off to the side. A couple of the errored shots were that it was moving actually too slow to read. And that's happened before with like some super messed up jolt mods that we've done in the past. But like I said, this is in line now. A lot of people are too new to the hobby to remember this. But when Snapfire 8 first came out, uh, it was a real lottery which one you would get. You would either get a really good snap fire, which would shoot like 50, 60 FPS. you get a real stinker, which would shoot like 20, 30 FPS. Now, uh, my buddy Flying Chicken used to use them as his uh, HVZ primaries, actually. He would carry a blowgun, but, and this is like right around the era where stripes became ubiquitous, but he would carry two snap fire aids because they're semi-auto springers. You could just pop, 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 pop. And it was very much a, a like, 
gunslinger-esque kind of. I guess the most recent version of this would be like Star-Lord in the MCU, but like the, the dual-wielding gunslinger is pretty, uh, pretty cool as a trope, so to speak. But um, that's how he would use them. This is very similar to that. These are significantly bulkier than the Snapfire 8. However, if you ever wanted to, like, all this could get cut off. You'd have to have the back piece and most of the front piece now. I normally hate harmonica style clips like this, but at least it's moving laterally up. Uh, up means that the weight profile is staying more or less the same as you're shooting. And then unfortunately it does mean that like by the time you're at the end of your magazine, you have a huge line of sight obstruction. But you can't have everything. What else were they gonna do, make it a revolver? That would be crazy. Uh, in a world where you can't buy the Snapfire 8, this is a suitable replacement. And I think that it's going to suffer the similar fate where like you're either going to get a really good one that shoots about 50 to 60 or one like this, which is all over the place. Some of those shots were 20 FPS, 30 FPS, 48, 50, etc. And that's sort of the feel that I was getting. However, this thing's sweet spot and the only time I've ever seen blasters like this, the semi-auto springers used competitively, is in HVZ in that circumstance and using them as kind of like a close range point click sort of a last stand blaster it's definitely the kind of thing that like demands you get used to it first but it is sweet it's good to see semi-auto springers back on the market i like this technology i've liked it for a very long time uh, i was a huge fan of the snapfire 8 when it came out i'm sure that you could corroborate that by checking out my og review on it but uh this is not a bad blaster so good way to start off 2019 with some genuine hasbro tech uh showing up and delivering the hits Another good way to start of 2019 is as of the launch of this video, I am live on Twitch, not doing uh, MTG Arena right now, actually. We already flexed our way into the top 50 uh, players worldwide on the ladder, which felt really good in past streams. And so tonight, actually on live stream, my buddy Pat and I are going to be building a Jupiter. And before the Hasbro employee watching this freaks out, I'm talking about the Jupiter from Out of Darts. Why did you name your blaster after a community blaster? I have no idea, but we're going to be building an Out of Darts Jupiter uh, in the studio start to finish. And it should be pretty exciting. So tune in live twitch.tv backslash vampire drac. If you're watching this as it launches, it's happening right diggity now. And then we'll... Uh, We'll probably move into just some fine tuning of some stuff around the workshop and who knows where we take the stream from there but uh live on twitch right now much love nerf on nail biter out don't actually bite your nails guys it's a filthy habit <laughs> <laughs>